Well, welcome back into the Mid Norfolk Farm Garden. I'm not actually in the garden this afternoon. I'm over in one of the paddocks where the head to the borehole is located. Now, this supplies the water to the entire farm, including the farmhouse and all the surrounding water troughs. Now, one of my many projects last year was to try and take this power supply in the pump, the electric pump that pumps the water out of the borehole into a header tank in this shed off the mains electricity supply and instead power it by solar. So about February last year we installed these two solar panels and a system was installed in the shed, I'll show you that in a minute, to provide what we thought at the time was going to be adequate electricity to supply that pump for a full 365 days a year. But little did we know at the time that the system was not going to be adequate for the job, particularly over an English winter. You can see the sun's come out here. We're in January and in England, Northern Hemisphere, the mistake we made with the design of this system was to look at the total electricity supply that we expected to draw on over the period of 12 months and then design a system around that and what the total generation of the system was going to be, allowing in a healthy excess. The error we made was in calculating just how much power we were going to generate over the winter months. Now you can look, those two panels out there, each one's rated at 270 watts peak. But it's a sunny day here in Norfolk in January, there's a very low arc of the sun, and between the two panels, even in full sun with no shadowing, we're only generating just under 200 watts. 15.8 amps is going into these batteries. Now these have been operating on electric this morning but we were on the mains over the last 24 hours because it was rainy getting 12.8 volts on these batteries in this sunlight which means they are 97.1 percent charged and if i just draw back on this system i'll just run you through what we've installed here this is the sine wave inverter that generates the uh, ac current to power the electric pump below that is the power in vitron energy links power unit which basically takes the power from the batteries from the solar charger which is this box here which is basically the charge controller for the batteries and the final element of the unit is the isolation switch for the solar pv so i can switch them off from the system currently connected to these are two vitron energy lead carbon batteries with a total of at 20 ampere hours 160 so 320 but actually two lots of 150 if you look at this at a 10 hour rate which gives us a total battery capacity of 300 amp hours now before that we had some slightly larger gel batteries on but the big first mistake i made here was to not repair the roof properly big no-no where you're putting your batteries you've got to make sure that they are in a dry environment we had water penetration in here and water sitting on top of the battery connections at the top and you can see these are are flat these are just sitting on the concrete block below all the system which means any water that dribbles onto these risks shorting these circuits and that's what we suspected happened with this original set of gel batteries here which is why we replaced them but I have tested these batteries now and we thought by having such a rapid sudden low discharge we may have put some damage into these batteries but they are holding a good charge and I don't think that was the case at all. I think we just discovered this at the same time as this system basically failed to put enough power into the batteries. And this system worked beautifully between February when it was fitted and around the end of October but as soon as we hit the winter low arc of sun plus a combination of these panels being located just to the western edge of this pump shed which means in winter they're actually partially shaded until around 10 30 in the morning and then even if we've got good sunlight as we have got here today they are only in sun and generating power until around 2 30 3 o'clock in the afternoon at the latest after which you're looking at the power generation on that dial which I've just shown you we we would in now you see the sun's gone in now they're in sort of dappled dappled sunlight if I show you the power on there I, I bet it's dropped to around 60 or 70 watts 
Yeah, there you go. That's what they're generating in subdued. Direct light, it's a nice bright day, 65 watts, and I bet there's probably one or two amps coming into the batteries. Well, that's not bad actually, 5.3, more than I'd expect really in that dapple sunlight, but it proves a point that what this system doesn't really allow you to get through is those dull winter days. And in England, what you must expect during September, October, November, December, January and February is days when you don't get any direct sunlight onto these solar cells at all. And when that happens, the power that's generated and put back into the batteries is going to be quite minimal. So, solution for this system. What we had to do initially in October was get a generator over into the shed. And for a period of time I was running a petrol generator here with a battery charger and putting charge onto both of those batteries and with a separate AC output driving the pump while we had the generator running. What I've learnt from this system is that you can't base the design of your solar system if you're going off grid just on the 12 month electricity usage that historically you've drawn off the mains. You really do need to over engineer it for those winter months when you've got to have resilience in the system and the battery charge to get you through probably seven or eight days of very little electricity production and battery recharge. So what are my plans for this system? Well, we are going to radically redesign it and upgrade it in this spring. We're going to go to a 48 volt system from the current 12 volt system. We've got some new charge controllers coming in which will allow us to utilize all four batteries which will radically increase the battery storage on site that we've got but we've also got to look not just at the battery storage but the generation now as I said earlier the output of these at peak is 270 per panel they are woefully inadequate over the winter months they generate in excess of what we need during the period from February through to end of September but we do need to increase this radically and we're looking at taking the number of panels from two up to nine and we're looking because you can't get these 270s currently in the UK and increasing them to 370s per panel so that is really significantly going to increase the amount of power generation we have during the winter months but give us massive excess of power generation during the summer months so how do you manage that what do you do with it well here is one possible solution you will see we gave up on going off grid because of the inconvenience of having to come over during the winter months and put the generator on to run this system. We're totally dependent on this pump to give us flushing toilets, running water and drinking water in the farm. So we reconnected back in to the mains grid which was already luckily connected through to this uh, national power grid fuse box. Eon came and put a new, well Eon Next came and put a new meter in. We are going to get this upgraded to a smart meter and then we are going to put a grid tied system in. Now what is the difference between a grid tied system and a off grid system? Basically a grid tied system is connected to the grid continuously and produces electricity from the solar panels which is then fed back into the, the grid with the smart generator tariff. So we will get paid electricity by Eon Next that we produce on site. How much electricity will we be producing on site? Well, I haven't seen the exact figures for the new panels yet. We are gonna move them from this position and bring them out about eight feet in front of this existing position into this field where they will not be shaded from the shed and that should significantly increase the amount of electricity generated in one go. But also, just look at the angle of these. This is the standard angle that's recommended for solar panels, which is great during the summer months. It's around 30 degrees, but it's not ideal for winter conditions when the arc of the sun is just over the trees behind me. It does mean that they're in sun, but they're at a slant against that sun. And I think if we could get a system where these could be moved between the summer position of 30 degrees and a winter position of 40 or even 45 degrees then we could significantly increase the ampage output and wattage output of the panels. So I haven't given up on solar despite the disappointment performance of this system over the winter months and the inconvenience that it's caused to me. 
having to buy a generator and run a petrol generator during a petrol and fuel shortage here in the UK was incredibly stressful. But what I want to be in a situation of is not relying on the grid for power. We've got, I don't know, this is globally recognised as a problem, the potential of increasing electricity prices over the next quarter to six months. And if I wanted to tie this system in on a two-year contract with Eon Next at the moment, I was alarmed to find out that the unit price per kilowatt hour that they were offering just before Christmas 2021 was in excess of 50p per kilowatt hour. Now that is a much higher level than we've been paying historically. We're running on a system on the farm meters before this was taken out of around 23 to 24 pence I think with a slightly lower rate for the economy seven period of time down to around 13 pence but what we'd noted was that the economy seven rates were creeping up and the daytime rates were creeping up but on a straight metered system now then we are looking at an increase of around 50 to 100 percent on the electricity charges per kilowatt hour which starts to make solar generation look far more economical and a long-term bet the feedback time the payback time sorry for this system was initially worked out at between nine and a half and ten years I've done the maths, if you put in the electricity prices at the new rates, then that brings it down to around two to three years. And for the new system, we're looking at a capital outlay which would be repaid in around two and a half years. And I'm looking for a system that will generate me an income off this metre, if you like, of around £250 a year rather than a net charge. Now obviously that's going to vary considerably with most of the income coming in the summer months and probably a deficit and a payment having to be made to them back during the winter months. But it should keep the cost of running this pump to me right down, I hope. We'll keep you advised and informed and I'm hoping to move forward with the new design sometime during February and March of this year. So we'll show you that and talk you through the final design when that's completed.